thank you for joining me on my YouTube channel. I want to show you a stamping technique today that's really, really pretty, really delicate as well, and great if you love um, a little bit of therapeutic colouring, um, hand colouring and watercolour painting, things like that. So we're going to be working with a watercolour paper. Um, I always suggest get the very best quality you can possibly afford that your budget will stretch to. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is um, position my paper, I've already cut this down to size, uh, into a stamping block and I'm going to use these stamps from All and Create. So I'm going to pick all three of the floral clusters there and stamp them all together. I'll be cutting them out later so I can do them all on one piece and not worry about the positioning. So I need to ink these with an ink. Now usually I'd go in with something like a Versafine because I can really pick up the detail and I'd go in with a black so you can see that detail clearly. For this particular technique what I'm going to do is first of all make sure these stamps are extra clean by taking either a stamp cleaner or a wet wipe to them, something to make sure you get as much excess off as possible. We don't want any of this dark ink transferring. So I'm just going to quickly clean these up. Okay, so they're primed and ready to go. In fact, this one is a brand new stamp, so talking of priming, priming I'm going to do exactly that with any new clear stamp. I'll always brush over the edge with an eraser, so it's just a pencil eraser, and I'll just go round in circles with the flat edge, and you can do it to all of them, just to make sure there's no residue on them. And that will just take off any coating that's on the stamp there, brush away any of the little pieces and make sure that's all clean. Now, I'm going to go with a really pale um, distressing. This one's called Bundled Sage and you see it's a really pale colour. We want to be able to see it, but we don't want it to really show up. And I'm using Distress Ink because it's um, water reactive. Now, with these being water reactive, when I start doing my painting, my colouring techniques, this outline edge is simply going to blend into the colouring so we're not going to see those harsh lines and it's really very pretty. So just covering all the elements there. We want to be able to just about see that ink but not be too dark so just press that down. We don't need to press too hard. Just glide over make sure that's all down there and have a look. See if you need to press anywhere else. Because you're going on to a watercolour cardstock um, just bear in mind that this is slightly textured, so you do need to press into all the grooves and have a look and just make sure. Okay, now what I'm going to do is just do that once more to capture the centres where I've just missed with the inking. That's much better there, so I can now see where all my leaves and flowers are, but it's ever so pale. You may find it much easier to see. Um, it to the naked eye rather than through the screen but I can see them perfectly enough to start playing with them. So the next stage is now to start painting these. Um, what I'm going to do to prepare my paint as such is choose some distressing colours. So I've got some darker colours now. I've got Rustic Wilderness, I've got Peeled Paint and I've got Dusty Concord. So the flowers are going to be in the Dusky, con dus dusty Concord, if I can say it, and the two greens are going to make up the leaves. So what I'm going to do is on a piece of acetate or a piece of uh, plastic packaging, something ideally clear, clear with a white background so you can really see the colours. I'm just going to spread a little of each of the colours here. Now I'm going to take a water spray and I'm just going to spritz these just to activate that colour and to loosen it up a little. And now just like so. So that was probably about... Between 10 and 15 spritz is completely in total. Uh, I've got a few variations of watercolour brushes here. They're all round pointed brushes, um, but I've got small going up to larger. I'm going to start with the small one, with the detail. I have some water here and I have a paper towel as well. So I'm just going to zoom into this for you so you can really see what I'm doing. So starting with this cluster down the bottom here, I'm going to start in the middle and work my way out. Um, so picking up some purple first of all, simply if I bring this in for you, simply by dipping a wet brush into the ink and you can pull it out and add more water to it if you want a lighter tone as well. So you'll have lots of variations in there to choose from. So this is essentially your paint palette here. I'm going to start with this flower in the centre, 
and I've got quite a pale colour on there, quite a lot of wet at the moment and as I go round that petal what will happen is the uh, outline of this flower will gradually blend into that purple simply because that is a um, that is a water-based ink under there so that will pick up. Now I'm going to work on petals that are not next to each other allowing each one to dry in a very very pale purple first of all and then we'll start doing some layering because if you do one petal next to the other what will happen is as the paint before the paint gets a chance to dry that will actually start bleeding into the one next to it so we want to avoid avoid that. Sometimes I find it easier because we've got some quite pale um, lines here sometimes I find it just as easy to take a look at the image that's printed on the packaging I keep that beside me and then I, re I can refer to that to see where the petals are and which parts are leaves there we go so that's all the petals for that part of the flower now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with a darker piece of the ink so this is some ink on my plastic that hasn't been toned down I'm going to start putting this darker ink in where I think the shadows in the petals will be again I'm going to start on one of the first petals that I coloured in I'm going to just remove the paint from my paintbrush with some water and drag and blend that dark colour out and then I'm going to have a dark ink again on this underneath area of the petal just like so. So we're thinking about shading here, we're thinking about where the shadows are falling so they'd usually be on the inside of a petal or down the <clears throat> down the bottom of the petal like so and then I'm going to clean my brush off and just drag that ink out a little, blend it out so it's always handy to keep some clean water and a paper towel near you while you're doing this so I want to make this piece quite dark as well but I'm going to do that in a moment because this is wet here, this is wet here I don't want to interfere with that in fact I do want to just add a little more depth to the bottoms here what I love about watercolour painting is that you can really build up shading and shadows but because of the water effect, the water blending into itself um, it helps you a lot with the blending so the leaves I'm going to do in the same way if you remember I have two different colours of ink on my plastic a pale green and a light green um, so I use the colours Peeled Paint and Rustic Wilderness I'm just going to do exactly the same as I did with the purple mix in a little bit of water, we've already spritzed those now with the peeled paint that is the colour that I did the stamping with so uh, that will work really well with the stamping you probably won't see much stamping at all with that so just going over the edges of the stamping in a pale shade of the peeled paint colour I'm just using the tip of the paint brush there just to brush into the lines there we go, we can do this stem as well one area I'm not going to worry about here is these, there's lines and there's scribbles and things I'm actually going to leave those so then I'm going to bring in a little bit of the Rustic Wilderness this is a new shade at the moment for Distress Inks and I'm just going to dot uh, this in areas on the stems particularly areas where it would be darker anyway so down the centre of the leaf then the base base towards the flower and the base of the leaf as well so I'm going to work round now all of the flowers there all of the leaves this will probably take me um, a good hour I would say at least um, you'll get into the flow of it obviously I won't be explaining it as I go so I'll speed up a little bit um, I'll probably bring in another colour so um, a yellow based colour for the centre of the flowers there and I'll see you back when I've filled in all of these flowers 
So now you can see I've coloured all my flowers and my leaves in and the only part of the outline that you can really see now are the squiggly bits around the outside um, that we use for texture and distressing but um, I'm actually going to cut out the flowers now so I'll probably be snipping a lot of that away. Um, I use embroidery scissors, these ones are from Fiskars. I find embroidery scissors really have the sharpest possible point on them. Um, I don't use them for needle craft or anything at all beforehand so I only stick to using them with my paper and they in my opinion are the best ones for fussy cutting for getting in to all that little detail so I'm going to start cutting these out and then I'll come back. So now all of my flowers are cut out, flowers and leaves are fussy cut out. I did use a craft knife to get into the middle of them and they're all perfectly dry so I'm going to pop those to the side and just create a card base. Yeah, I'm happy with that positioning, I've got lots of layers in there, um, I haven't stuck the stems down and I've only used a few bigger or larger blobs of glue over the under the flowers there just to lift those up and the rest of the leaves can then if need be can be shaped. Um, last thing to do is just to add a sentiment um, but actually there's a, there is one more step I'd like to add some white paint I nearly forgot about that so I love Dr PH Martin's bleed proof white and this is like a white ink or a white paint it usually settles and it gets quite thick so you do need some water and a paintbrush so I'm actually going to switch for a slightly smaller paintbrush here Need some water and just pop, some, pop a wet paintbrush into the white paint there give it a little mix, there we go and then what I'm going to do is tap until I start to get some white blodges. You can add more water if you need to if you'd like larger blobs. You can dispense a little of this if you want to out onto um, a palette or a craft bat if you want. Now this will dry quite chalky, so sometimes you find you can actually um, get rid of some of the larger blobs if you want to just by sort of scratching them off, which I'll probably do just where we've got larger areas there, but this just helps add a little bit of distressing, a little bit of texture. Just to finish this off, I'm going to take a raw chipboard um, sentiment here. I'm not going to add any colour to it because I think the colours, the grey there, perfectly works with um, everything else that I've got going on here and I'm just going to sit that word love in that little gap just there. To frame the entire card I'm going to take a gel pen and I'll just do some faux stitching around the edge to finish that off. 